before work. So today uh, I wanted to talk specifically about Mr. Julian Schwartz, uh, who Aaron at Growing Up Scientology brought up a couple times um, in his last couple lives. And um, he and I both know him from our training days at Flag, but I've got a little deep dive in history about uh, Mr. Schwartzy Schwartz. Um, and not the fun Schwartz from, hi, um, uh, from, uh, as everybody knows, the Schwartz, uh, if you're a Mel Brooks fan. Um, let me just say, um, Julian's dad, Louis Schwartz, worked with my mom back in the 70s in the grand old uh, geo days. Um, so there's a reason um, all of us Scientology babies, well, hello from the UK, um, uh, you know, ended up in the Sea Org. Okay, there is a very old expression, and I've mentioned it before, that Scientology is the smallest town on the planet. Okay, and when you are a born in, like me, like Aaron, like Julian, um, you have one destiny, and that is the Sea Org. However, when you, oh, I would love a super chat. Uh, guess what, guys? I have made the goal of uh, the, the watch hours, but keep watching, please, and hit like and subscribe if you have not. Um, but I, I've submitted for the monetization. Um, and uh, as soon as they get back to me, the YouTubes, gods, uh, please uh, say yes. So I'm just waiting. Um, but back to Julian. So, uh, as you know, there is a hierarchy in Scientology. So you have your Tom Cruises, you have your celebrities, but then you also have your super wealthy, uh, connected Scientology families, right? Um, and when you have the super wealthy, connected Scientology families and things like that, um, they are, you know, super importante, okay? And you're going to get, um, very big ranking, right? And, um, when you, when you do that, um, it's, you know, you're going to get special positioning, but if your parents were like my parents and they caused a lot of trouble or they were former uh, guardians office members like my parents, like Julian Schwartz's parents, then you're not going to rise so far in the rankings of, um, the Sea Organation. So Mr. Julian Schwartz, who I'm sure is watching my channel. Hi, Julian. Remember me? I know you do. <laughs> um, maybe ask yourself this question, Julian. Why is it that after all of this tremendous work that you have done, including like your superb handling of me, never, um, have you never gone to Ant? Have you never been promoted past the advanced organization of Los Angeles, why have you never made it over the rainbow to the oh-so-confidential location in Hemet, to the international base? Why is that, Julian? Have you ever thought about that? Are you ever going to make it there? The answer, my friend, is no. You are most definitely not. Just like I was never going to get promoted there. Not because of the gay, which of course I was never going to get promoted there because super gay. But um, the real reason I was never going to get promoted there and the real reason you're never going there, my friend, no matter who you handle, no matter what you do, is because your daddy is Louis Schwartz. Okay? And the reason why you are strategically posted where you are, all right, is because your dad is Louis Schwartz, all right? And so they can keep you right there in LA, just enough ethics presence. If, if you've never seen um, Julian Schwartz in real life, he's like 6'5", kind of a beefy guy, and, you know, not terrible looking. I'm not going to critique his looks, um, but he's an intimidating build of a, of a man. And, um, you know, so if you're in trouble, he's not really the guy you want to see in real life. Um, 
but uh, he's he's the kind of guy who, if you're scared, he's gonna get the the confession out of you, right? Um, and so for sure, um, you know, he's gonna find your secrets out, and he like. Um, our friend there at CC, who's the MAA, has been programmed since birth to do what he's told to do. And he's going to report to all the people that he's supposed to report to um, and tell all the secrets just like he's supposed to and do all the things that he's supposed to do and tell everybody was supposed to do. So he got all the little secrets and then he edited them the way that he was supposed to and then passed them along because he's a good little robot. You know what his job was before he made it to AOLA to his high and mighty post right now where he gets to deal with celebrities? He was the materials officer at FLAG. Do you know what that means, kids? That is a fancy way of saying that he handed out paper and pens to the students who were training at FLAG. So if we needed paper or pens or we needed like um, a sweater because our org didn't send us a sweater, he would have to get that for us. But we still had to call him sir because he was from a higher org and he made sure that we called him sir. Because he was very picky about that. And if we didn't say it nice, he wasn't going to get it for us. Okay? So, let me tell you that he has a very big button on importance. But Julian, stop trying to make fetch happen, honey. Because that promotion to Ant ain't never going to happen. David Miscavige, I promise, is never going to have a baby of the G.O. sitting up there at the Ant table, honey. Ain't never going to happen. Take a tally. Take a tally, Julian. Look around. Look around. How many kids of Guardian's office members are at Ant? Think about it. None. Zero. We are marked since birth. True story time, kids. When I was a baby in 1976, and my mama was in the guardian's office, which was located at the oh-so-beautiful Celebrity Center before it was the Celebrity Center, my mom used to bring me to work because there was no child care. And so I sat in my little playpen inside of her office, which was filled with secrets and smoke. And because it was 1976, and they would discuss all of their secret ops and the spying and the things they were doing. Now, mind you, I was an infant, okay? Like weeks old, months old, a baby. Okay. At one point, her uh, senior, Henning Helt, became also paranoid that as a wee baby, uh, I was, you know, absorbing all this secret spy information. Because as Aaron has explained and other people on other channels have explained, uh, Scientology does not believe in babies or children or anything else. You are a bajillion year old uh, spiritual being in a teen tiny body. Okay. So he was convinced that later on down the line, I would recall all of these secrets and be able to reveal everything that had gone on in this office and get all of them, you know, arrested or whatever. So, um, I, he wanted to bond me for future, uh, you know, uh, something. So he wanted to type out a bond and then have me sign it as an infant with my footprints so that I would never reveal the secrets of the guardian's office for the rest of my life. My mother thought that he was insane and refused to have me do this. This was a strike one against me as a baby. Strike two uh, came a, a year and a half later. I was, okay, 18 months old, again, a baby. When my mother uh, then realized, um, you know, things were 
shit was hitting the fan uh, for the Guardian's office in Scientology at the time. And she decided, you know, maybe I should skedaddle. Her contract was up and she wanted to be a full-time mom. So she decided not to sign another contract and she was just going to be a mom to me. Well, this was very scandalous. Oh my God, I'm going to mother my child. Ah! This is just disgusting. So uh, she went through many uh, sec checks, security checks to find uh, her crimes. And then they decided that this tiny baby was suppressive. And literally at 18 months old, they tried to declare me a suppressive person. They knew it then in 1977 that I was a suppressive person. They should have just done it then and been away with me. They predicted it then, and uh, it came true later. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, turns out they were right. Anyway, um, yeah, they, they didn't declare me an SB, but uh, they literally said I was because I was drawing my mom away from her purpose in life of, you know, handling planet Earth, etc. So, yeah. Even Scientology will go so far as declaring a baby a suppressive person because um, her mother needs her to care for her, okay? So nothing, kids, nothing is below Scientology. And, um, you know, I'm sure Julian has grown up as a, as a cadet. Um, you know, there's a great book out now called The Bad Cadet. Please look that up. That is a memoir um, by uh, someone I've known uh, who I've grown up with, uh, you know, and was in the Sierra with. Please look up that book. Please go buy it. Um, there's nothing that you can't uh, learn about what's gone on in our lives. Um, you know, Julian grew up in the Sea Org. He's had a lot of aspirations. It's never going to happen for him. Um, but he is a key player in this because he altered the facts and made it impossible for the Jane Doe's story to actually be told. So um, that's a little bit of my history. There's a lot more to come. I have to go to work. Okay, but I am so excited to see you all in here. Um, uh, thank you all for tuning in. I appreciate all of you. Uh, thank you so much for liking and subscribing and watching all of my content. I cannot tell you how uh, much joy it is bringing me to see all of your comments and everything else. Uh, I'm working really hard to get everything else going uh, so that I can do this more. Uh, but I do have to go and uh, make the money uh, the regular way right now. But I'll be back here as soon as I can. All right. I hope your Tuesday is amazing. All right. And I'll let you know some more uh, inside scoop as soon as I can. All right. I'll talk to you guys later. Oh, no, that's this is my first live. I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm going to I'm going to turn it off. OK, <laughs> I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.